So I'm going to use this notation that we talked about but we haven't used. So ddx of, so this means take the derivative and x is the variable. So with respect to x of whatever I put here, so I'm going to put a c here. So c is a constant. So this is a formula. Okay, so the derivative of a number or a constant with respect to x is just zero. Okay, it's zero. It's zero. So whenever you have a number and you're finding the derivative, you just put zero. Okay, you just put zero. Let me give you an example right away so you see it. So ex means, means example. So say we have like y equals 2. Let's go real slow. y equals 2, right? So that's a horizontal line, right? And so derivative is slope. So the slope of a horizontal line is 0, right? Because it's rise over run and the rise is 0. So the derivative is 0. So you just do y prime equals 0. That's it. That's it. That's it. So whenever you have a number, the answer is 0 if you have to find the derivative. This next exam is like the derivative test. It's more important than your first exam because everything builds on this test, right? So that's why there's so much homework. Again, when you see the homework, you're going to feel overwhelmed. It's okay, we're going to do most of it and we'll do more next time. So it's a lot of homework. It's good for you. So that's one. So two. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, cool. Um, so if you take the derivative with respect to x of x to a power, of x to a power, this is called the power rule, I guess, if you want to give it a name. So you can call it the power rule. So I'll, I'll give it a name, power, power rule. I think we talked about this before, uh, maybe. So do you remember what you do with the number here? You put it in the, in the front. Yeah, you remember. Oh, well, it wasn't even on your test. Good. And you put it in the front and you subtract 1, so n minus 1. So whatever number is here, you just put it in the front and you subtract 1. So. That's it, right? So put it in the front, subtract one. Okay, let's let's do let's do an example right away. So ex means example. So I'll call it uh, y just to save time. So y equals x cubed, x cubed, and we'll find the derivative of of x cubed using using this power rule formula, right? So y prime. So you put the prime when you're taking the derivative, right? So it's really important. And then you put the 3 in the front, and you're left with x to what power in this case? Squared. 2 squared. Very good. And that's it. That's it. Easy, right? You'll have some easy ones on your test. I'll, I'll really try to focus on that, but yeah. yeah. There's only so many questions I can put on your test. So you only have 2 hours and 20 minutes. So. Any questions on that, on that one, on the power rule? We'll do more examples. I just, just want to like give you the rule, do an example. Give you the rule, do an example. Okay, so that's the, the first rule. Uh, the, the second rule. The third rule is kind of weird. It basically says if you have a number times some function of x, right? You have a number times a function of x, you can ignore the number. It just hangs out, so I'm going to pull it out. Or rather, it just hangs out. So it's just c times the derivative. So you just take the derivative of this, and the number just hangs out. Right? So numbers hang out when they're in front of things with x. Like by themselves, they become zeros. Right? But watch. Check it out. Let's be weird. Let's call it h of x, just to make it confusing. Hmm. What's a nice number? Two. two. OK, two. Very good. A nice. So two x to the fourth. So 2x to the fourth. So let's take the derivative. So we would write h prime of x, right? h prime of x. And then now the number, it just hangs out. That's the c. So you would actually have to multiply, right? So what would you get in the front this time? 2 times 4, so 8. And then x to, to the third. Yeah, that's it. That's it, very good. So you know, you know calculus, right? Imagine if we would have been doing this the first day, right? It's like, oh, it's like so, it's really not hard, right? It's really not hard. It gets harder, I assigned a ton of homework. Again, you'll, you'll, feel, you'll feel overwhelmed, but that's good for you. Like, it builds character. I assigned some of the hardest problems in the book. Like, it's, it's good, it's good. Four, four, it's good. Ooh, okay, this is interesting. So DDX, I haven't looked at my notes since last year. <laughs> so it's like, oh wow, we're doing this? So if you have f of x plus or minus g of x, so you have two things. So ddx, that's ddx. Again, it's really bad. No, 
really messy handwriting, ddx. So take the derivative with respect to x of this. This is called Leibniz notation, this ddx stuff. It is convenient for this. Like it lets me write down the formulas in a convenient way. Most people don't like it though. So basically if you have two things, you just take the derivative of each thing individually when they're being added or subtracted. So this is just f prime of x and the plus or minus just hangs, hangs out. So plus or minus, plus or minus g prime of x. That's it. So if you have multiple things, you just take the derivative of each piece. Right, let's do an example um, just so you see how it works. So ex means, means example. So let's say y equals, oh I know, let's do, let's do three pieces. Let's go nuts. So 4x squared plus 7x to the fourth plus six. Oh, one more, plus two x. <laughs> we haven't done stuff like this yet. So this just formula says we just take the derivative of each piece, right? So y prime. So what would the derivative of four x squared be? Does anyone know? 8, 8x, good. Everyone okay with why it's x? Because you subtract one and you get x to the 1, right? So 8x, very good. 8x. 8x, and then uh, 4 times 7 is 28. I was thinking about something bad. x cubed, right? I was thinking the points reset now, right? The mistake points. So, yeah, so, right. What's the derivative of 6? Zero. Yeah, I'm not going to write it, but it's zero because it's, so it's gone. So I'll, I'll write it. I'll write it. But it's zero. It's zero. Right? You don't have to write it on a test. Uh, it's weak. What's the derivative of 2x? Two. two. Yeah, the derivative, it's okay. The derivative of x is one, right? Yeah, the derivative of x is one, right? Um, because, because you can think of it like this. Two reasons. One, you can put the one in the front. No one does this. This is weird. It's so weird, it's difficult for me to do. <laughs> so, so, right? So you bring down the one, subtract one, one minus one is zero, so you get one. Another way to think about it is it's a straight line, so the slope of the line is two, because it's mx plus b. So you would just rewrite it now. You would just get 8x plus 28x cubed plus two, plus two. Okay, that's it. That's it. This is the stuff like, I mean, this is probably like when you, when you take calculus and like if you get an A, ideally you are really good at doing this when you're done. I mean, we learn a lot of stuff, limits and all these theorems, intermediate value theorem, but for all practical purposes for your next class, calculus two, you want to be really good at this stuff. You want to become like a pro. Um, the next uh, few formulas uh, are a little bit more complicated. I'm going to come over here and write them over here. Um, it might be hard to give some, some good examples of each, uh, but I'll try. I'll try. So that was four, so now we're at five. So five. So five has, has a name. Um, it's called the product rule. So I'm going to write the name on this one. So this is the product rule. Product rule. Product rule. Yeah, I think I'll have a hard time giving you an example right away until we cover some trig stuff. So basically, it's the formula for the derivative of a product. So you have f of x times g of x. Um, I do the formula a little bit differently than the book does. So if you watch the homework videos, like the videos in WebAssign, the person will do them a little bit differently, right? I'll explain why I do them differently. I, I think it's beneficial, at least to me. So the way I memorize it is I think of this is the first and this is the second. So it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first and then times the derivative of the second. You might say, why do you call it first and second? Why not just f and g? It's because you're not going to have f and g in the problem. You're going to have crazy stuff here. You'll have like sine x or you'll have like some square root. So derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first. All right, we'll come back to this in a little while and we'll do an example. I'm having a hard time coming up with one with what we know at this point. So the other rule is called the quotient rule, okay? Quotient rule, quotient rule. I think these are in like section 2.3, by the way, these formulas. I think, I think, I think. Quotient rule. So the quotient rule gives you a formula for the derivative of a quotient or a fraction. 
You want to try to avoid this rule as much as possible, and today we're going to look at various scenarios, um, like when you can avoid it, when you can't avoid it, stuff like that. So if you have f of x over g of x, f of x over g of x, so you can think of this as the first and this is the second, or top and bottom. It doesn't matter. So first, second, top, bottom. So it's the derivative of the first times the second. Wow, you all know this. It's minus. Yeah, except it's minus the first times the derivative of. So it's the same formula almost. You see? f prime g, f g prime. f prime g, f g prime. That's why I do it this way. The textbook does not do it this way, okay? Over the second one, squared, squared. So this is the, the quotient rule, right? The quotient rule. So again, you can think of this as the top and the bottom. It's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom one squared. And the, 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 it's the same here, right? F prime g, f g prime, f prime g, f g prime. So they match. This is the way I learned it when I took calculus a long time ago. This is the way my teacher taught us in class. Um, and I, I was able to memorize it thinking of it that way. The th next rule we're going to look at, we'll do an example of this soon. I believe this is in 2.4, right? Uh, is called the chain rule. Right? It's called the chain rule. This is my favorite rule. I love this rule. This is the best rule of all. You do this in calculus 3 also. However, in calculus 3, there's like multiple chain rules. It's kind of fun. So basically, this is the derivative of a composition, so something like this, f of g of x, f of g of x. We're almost done. We'll be done in like 10 minutes with all the notes, and then we're just going to do tons of problems. Yeah, it's just examples today. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing we're, doing, we're doing the notes for all, for all three sections, right? So when you're doing this, you want to think of f as your outside function, so I'm going to call it outside. This is just a nice way for, to think about it. And then g is your inside function. Okay, So it's the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside. So you leave the inside untouched. So I'll make it smaller. Times the derivative of the inside. Okay, So it's the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside times the derivative of the inside. Okay. Let me, uh, I, can, I can actually give you a decent example of this right away so you see it. So check it out. Say we have, I'll call it h. h of x equals, how about uh, x squared plus x to the one third. To the one third. To the one third. So you have something to a power, right? And so you can think of your outside function as x to the one-third, and your inside function is x squared plus x. So this is your g. So when you take the derivative here, the way you do it is you kind of look at this as like one thing. So you take the derivative of the outside, so you put the one-third in the front like this. So one-third plus x. And then you have to subtract one. What's one third minus one? Anyone know? Negative two thirds, yeah, because it's one third minus three thirds, right? So it's negative two thirds. You become really good at subtracting one in this class. Like, you become a master. Um, so one third minus one is minus two thirds times. Now we have to multiply by the derivative of what piece? Of the x squared plus x, the inside. Very good, Jack. So what would the derivative of x squared plus x be? 2x plus 1. Hey, Ethan, you made it! Oh, good to see you. I got your email. I replied. Yes. Yeah. Good. Is the dog good? Sorry. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's, good. it's, good. it's a noble cause. Like, you know, it's good. It's good. It's good. Oh, I have your test, I think. Yeah. So I'll give it to you. Ethan Bronson, like like Charles Bronson. Yes. Any relation? Are you related to the actor? No, oh, okay. Exactly. Awesome. Okay, it's like a autograph. All right. <laughs> I know he's rich, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's. I, I don't even know if he's alive. Okay. So you put the one third in the front, subtract one, then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, and you just you can't do anything else. That's why I love the chain rule because you can't simplify most of the time. <laughs> you don't have to foil. You know this. 
This leads to all kinds of like really tedious foiling and simplifying. It's just part of calculus, but I like to avoid that as much as possible. So, <laughs> so this is just elegant and difficult. So that would be the derivative there. So this is your inside. Your outside is the one third uh, x to the one third. You bring the one third down, subtract one, then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. So that's the chain rule. Um, just to make the point, you're always using the chain rule. Like let, let's say you have h of x equals x cubed. Right, and we're going to talk about this on Monday, not, not Wednesday, on Monday when we do implicit differentiation. That's a really difficult concept for people to understand. And so thinking of things this way will help later. So normally we know this derivative is really easy. Um, what would this derivative be? 3x squared, yeah, very good. Three, you put the 3 in the front, right? you subtract 1, and you get that. But you can actually overcomplicate it. Watch this. You can totally overcomplicate it if you want to. Um, you can think of x as the inside function, right? You can bring the 3 down, leave the inside until untouched, you put a 2 here, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is x. What's the derivative of x? 1. So you're always using the chain rule, right? So you're always using the chain rule, right? So, so it's something to keep in mind. Because people often ask, when do you use the chain rule, right? Well, whenever it's not x, right? Like, whenever it's not x. Whenever it's not x. That's a 1. That's a 1. Your book has another rule, which I'll write on the board. Um, the, the first time I taught this class, I thought it was kind of silly. I'm like, why does the book have this formula? This is, this is weird. Like, what's the point? I think the point is to try to make things easier. Uh, they call it the generalized power rule. The generalized. We don't really need this formula, though. Generalized power rule. The generalized power rule is basically what we just did, right? When you have something to a power, um, you just use this, which is just the chain rule. So if you take the derivative with respect to x of, I think they use a u. Yeah, they use u of x. So parentheses u of x, parentheses to the n. I can't wait to do homework. We're almost there. Exciting. Let's see if we can do like 30 problems or something. I don't know. That's like crazy goals. So you have something to a power, right? Something to a power. So u of x to the n. So we just use the chain rule, right? Put the n in the front. So you have u of x. What would the exponent be in this case? n minus 1. You're creating mathematics, right? Creating, it's good. This is good. Times, what goes here? u prime of x. Look at that. You created the formula. That's awesome. See? Like, that, that's just good. That's just amazing. Good. Good work. Yes. Yeah, so that, that's it. That's it. So we used it here, right? This is your u, right? It's the same thing. This is your u. So the book just has this to emphasize the fact that it's useful, I guess. And this comes up a lot. It doesn't always come up, right? It doesn't always come up, but it comes up a lot. All right. Um, <laughs> These next formulas are in my notes, and it says put in a convenient place. That's what it says in my notes. Yeah, I don't know if that's necessary, but it's the trig formulas. Okay, the trig formulas. So you should memorize all of these. Almost done. So and then we'll do some problems. So the trig formulas. So trig, trig derivatives. I'm not sure what section this is. Uh, again, it's either 2, 2, 2, 3, or 2, 4. Remember, this is three sections, so it's, it's an overwhelming amount of material. And again, it's everything except the word problems. Okay. Um, so the first formula is for the derivative of the sine function. This one's pretty easy. So the derivative of, of sine x, of sine x. <clears throat> it turns out that the derivative of the sine function is just cosine. So it's just cosine. So you just memorize it. Derivative of sine is cosine. This is one of the things you remember, like when you're done with the course, because you do so much of this, you know, like it stays with you, maybe even for the rest of your life, like maybe even after you've, you know, when you're 80 years old, you might still know this, right? I mean, maybe. That would be great. Uh, and then take the derivative, <laughs> it's really cool, right? Derivative of cosine. This one is super annoying. Um, it may not seem that way, but when we get to integration, it's just one of those things. I wish it wasn't, but it is. This is negative sign. <laughs> so it's got a negative sign. <laughs> oh, it's got a negative sign, huh? Get it? Yeah, negative sign. That, that, that wasn't on purpose. That's so dumb. <laughs> yeah. 
The derivative of cosine is sine, but it's got a negative sign. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, so that's, that's the formula. Do you get it? Negative sine? Yeah, that's really bad. It's just terrible. It's so bad. Okay, whatever. DTX. Uh, the derivative, uh, how about tangent? That's another popular one. So I'm trying to do like the most popular ones. Derivative of tangent. This one is secant squared. So secant squared, secant squared x, secant squared x. Very popular derivative. Uh, you can ask, like, any Calc 2 student will know this. Like, it's one of those things. Uh, you, get, you become a master at this. And then the derivative of secant is secant tangent, right, secant tangent. I was teaching Calc 2 many years ago, and I had a student from Russia, and he told me that in Russia, he said, in my country, that's how he said it, with a cool accent, in my country we do not use these functions. I don't know if that's true. Um, but yeah, so he had all these formulas memorized in terms of sine and cosine. Like he had it memorized as the derivative of sine over cosine is one over cosine squared. That's how he had it memorized. Mm -hmm. He withdrew though, he, yeah, after the second test, he just, nice guy though, but yeah. <laughs> he had a really cool accent. He's like, in my country we do not do such things. I'm like, whoa, all right. <laughs> it's like, back up, like, sounding really hardcore. Um, so yeah, so interesting, right? And then, so these are the ones that come up the most, right? These are the ones you'll probably be able to memorize, and I'll give you some hints for memorizing them. These last two are the worst. So the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, okay? Negative, negative cosecant squared. And last but not least, or last and least, no, last and least, the derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant cotangent. You might say, I'm never gonna memorize these. You will, eventually, right? It'll take a lot of work, but you, eventually you will. You got a couple weeks of the next test. I mean, these are the ones that throw people off on tests sometimes. I usually put a question on there where like it's a really easy derivative. Like, find the derivative of cotangent plus cosecant, go. Like, so it's all about, do you know the formula, right? So sometimes some people will get it wrong. Um, but they don't come up a ton, right? These come up more. So a couple things to notice. Um, oh. Yes, I was about to say that. Good, Selena. All the C's are negative. So if it has a C, it's negative. If it has a, 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 a C, it's negative. If it has a C, it's negative. So if it has a C, it's negative, right? Yeah, it's pretty useful. I've never used that. I had a student who used that um, before. And it worked for him, right? So he got an A. And so all, all the C's, yeah. Why do they like equal what they equal? You have to prove each one individually. Yeah. yeah, it's a good question. I mean, you could think of like this one as the slope of the graph of the tangent function gives you the cosine. Like if you graph all the slopes, think about this. The derivative is the slope, right? I'm just, but it's, it's, this should be correct. So if you look at the derivative of sine, it's the slope of the sine function at every single point, like slope, 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 slope. So you look at the graph of all the slopes and you get cosine. It's pretty deep. Yeah. I just thought of that now because you asked. But, and, but the other ones are the same and you, you, could, you could derive them. Um, so all these things have negatives. Um, this one's pretty easy to memorize. This one's annoying. Notice that if you have the derivative of tangent and cotangent, so you get the Kant functions, right? You get secant squared, negative cosecant squared, right? You get those weird functions. Also, the derivative of secant and cosecant, they appear in their own derivatives, right? See, isn't that interesting? So the Kant functions appear in their own derivatives. So the derivative of secant is secant tangent. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So they appear in their own derivatives. So, and the derivatives of the and functions, whatever you have, tan and cotan, have the other, the, the cunt functions. So, yeah, eventually you just memorize them though. One more thing, the last thing I promise, and then we're done. We're just gonna do homework problems. And again, we're gonna do problems from every section and try to do as much as you can before next time. You'll probably, get, you will get stuck, right? Uh, but it's okay, because we'll finish it next time. Um, right, so the last thing is higher order derivatives. I know it's a lot, it's a lot of material. I think most people do like one day for each section, but I like to just do it, right? 
It's like, let's just do calculus in one day. Like, it's so great. So the first derivative is just what we've been doing, right? So it's like y prime. So like if you have y equals f of x. By the way, you can think of this as the zero if derivative, extra life knowledge. You know what? I'll even write it. Why not? Let's be different. Zeroth. No, that's zero if. Could be Zeroth though. It sounds like a video game god. Um, zero if derivative. Right? It's like a boss. Like at the end of the game, Zeroth. So, so the first derivative. First derivative is like y prime, so you have like y prime. You can write it that way. Uh, you can write it like f prime of x, you know, y prime of x, dy dx, etc. So that's that's the first derivative. The first derivative intuitively is the slope of the function, right? So that's what the, that's what the first derivative is. It's the slope. Okay. Then we have the second derivative. N next time we'll learn something else too. We'll learn that if your function gives you the position of an object, the first derivative is actually velocity. That's next time. That's right, so the word problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next time is catch up day too. Like we'll do all the hard problems that you got stuck on. So if you get stuck on any homework, we can do them in class next time. We'll have time for that, okay? So try to get stuck so we can. <laughs> so, why double prime? You're stuck on all of them. Number one, I can't do it. No, no, it's really easy. The first few are like, they'll make you feel smart. Um, so, I find all of the easy ones too, right? Not just the hard ones. Uh, so why, why double prime? That's how you say it, double prime. Don't, don't say prime prime. No one says that, so. <laughs> so I don't know. But if you say that, just don't mention me. Like, I always think, like, don't, don't. Go to the tutoring center. Can you help me find Y prime prime? Like, oh, who's your teacher? Like, <laughs> I don't want to be associated with that. No. So F double prime. Um, and then you can, this dy dx, when you write the second derivative, it's really weird. It's like this. That's the shorthand notation. That's the notation for it. I know. Look, that's, the placement of the twos, right, is really weird. There's a two here and there's a two here. Oh, wow. I know. Most people hate this notation. It's okay to hate it. It's all right. I'm not a fan either, right? I just, it's one of those things. I don't like the negative sign here. I mean, that's just. Huh? Pass. Pass. <laughs> third, third derivative. Yes? So for the second one, we don't have like a y double prime. Oh, I, you do. I was just lazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jennifer. No. Mar Marissa. No. Whoa, that was... <laughs> Why is that bad? Is that like... That was far. Far? <laughs> oh, it's Christina? Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Then we have Y <laughs> triple prime. Y triple prime. That exists. Yeah, so, so if, if your original function is position, then this is velocity, and then this is acceleration, just extra life knowledge. We'll do that next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. F triple prime of x, and I'll, I'll do this one since Christina asked. And then we have, we have this one. And then something weird. I have to do one more. I have to do one more just because something weird happens when you get to four. So when you get to four, People get tired of writing the prime symbols. They don't do prime, 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 prime. No one does that. Um, so they just say that's too many primes. So what they do is they do something else. So fourth derivative. <laughs> um, people just put a number there. And what they do is they put a parentheses around the number, like this. Weird, right? Because if you just put a number, it could be an exponent. So when you put a parentheses around the number, uh, uh huh? That means derivative. Yeah. Can you, do that with three? Yeah. No, it starts at four. you could do that with three. Yeah, but people usually start doing it at four. You can do that with three. Yes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, in Calc 2, you'll have formulas at the end of the class, depending on what school you take it at, who your teacher is. When you do Taylor series, like the very last test, which is people think it's the hardest test, and you have, you have an N here. And so you plug in zero and you get this. You plug in one, you get this. You plug in two, you get this. Plug in three, you get. The third. So yeah, you can you can have numbers there like that. Okay, and then this one as well, and then this one. I'll write it just for convenience, and then because just to be consistent. And then you could do this. Now sometimes people get lazy with this one, and they don't put the parentheses here. So sometimes people will do this, including me. 
and books will do this. So a lot of times these are used interchangeably. You'll drop the parentheses here. It's very common, okay? Because there's no confusion, right? You're not, you're not raising it to the fourth power. But if you put it here, you have to put parentheses just to, so people know it's not an exponent, right? So that's gonna come up next time, maybe. I'll try to remember to compute a derivative like this. How do you do this? You just compute the derivative twice. Like, you just do it twice. You just do it twice. Um, and again, if just extra life knowledge, if this told you the position of like uh, a, a car, this would tell you the velocity. Uh, this would tell you the acceler. Uh, no, no, this would tell you the velocity. Right, 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 right. So if this was the position, this would be the velocity, and this would be the acceleration. Mm -hmm. And this would be the jerk. It's called jerk. The third derivative. The third derivative of a position is called jerk. And I don't know if this is true, but the fourth, fifth, and sixth are supposedly called snap, crackle, and pop. But I don't know if that's true. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll do it next time. We'll do it. I'll, I'll Google it, and we'll do it next time. So, so when, that's for physics, if you're taking physics. You, anyone taking physics this semester? Okay. Not this semester. Not this semester. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do a lot of the, the, the stuff we're doing next time is a lot of the physics stuff, except we're gonna do it all from scratch, which I think is easier. We're done, we can do problems now. So that took, what, 37 minutes? Just gonna look at the homework. And um, we'll just do a bunch until we get stuck. And, oh, I know what we should do. I'm gonna start hard. No, 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 let's start easy, start easy, start easy, start easy, start easy. 2.2. .2. Oh, it's so easy, yeah, all right, let's do it. 2.2, number one. Let's do number one. Let's just do as many as we can, right? I mean, why not? So two point, so exciting. 2.2, 2. number one. This marker's weird, I don't like it. What? It's zero, yeah, it's very good. So the, the function is negative three, two, four. <laughs> It's great because everyone has the same homework problems. That's totally on purpose, right? So, so it's a number. So as Anais said, the derivative is just zero. And that's it. That's it. Sometimes I put that on the test, like number one, just to help you relax. Oh, remember the extra credit question on the test, the one I put on the board? Did you get it wrong? Oh. Yeah, that, that problem I wrote on the board last time, the huge number, the derivative was zero because it was a number. Did you get it, John, the extra credit? You did, yeah, I remember. I remember, we talked about it. Yeah. Any questions on number one? All right, number two. <laughs> number two. Did you get it right, Logan, the extra credit? No, okay, doesn't matter. We don't have to talk about it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> F of X. I never got extra credit questions right when I had them. Some people are really good at that, like math competitions. I competed in a math competition once, I got a 2% <laughs> out of 100. Yeah, and I thought I was gonna do better than everyone else. I was like, oh yeah, I'm better than these people. I got a 2%, had the lowest score out of everyone at my school who took it. <laughs> yeah, right? It's pathetic, I, I don't know what happened. I just, yeah, I thought I did great. I thought I was like, I'm gonna win. <laughs> so you can rewrite this. This is x to the one over seven, one over seven, one over seven. So you have to rewrite it first, okay? So one over seven, one over seven. So whenever you have a root like that, you wanna rewrite it first, so it's still f, right? So now we can take the derivative. This is a good problem. So you put the one seventh in the front, so you get one seventh x, Negative six over seven, because it's one seventh minus seven sevenths, which is negative six sevenths. It's hard to say that. Because it's one seventh, I'll write it. It's one seventh minus one, which is seven sevenths. One seventh minus seven sevenths is negative six sevenths. And you can leave it like that, right? Don't, don't, please don't simplify it. I mean, don't, don't bring it down. You can, but it's just better to leave it. Leave things with negative exponents. That's perfectly acceptable. So that's number two. That was number two. Any questions so far? All right, number three, let's just do it because I think the more we do it, it seems like we did more. One, we actually did, so f of t, is it t? Yes. What's the rest of it? 3t squared minus 6t plus 3. Plus 3, plus 3. So 3t squared minus 6t plus, plus 3. So this should be, so f prime of t, so you just use the power rule, right? Two times three. So it'll be 6t 
6 t minus 6. What about the 3? Zero. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I know, they're easy, but we, we, we want to do easy first, right? Just to warm up. Let's do number four. Let's just keep going. Let's just go through, do as much as we can. Eventually, we'll have to start skipping some because they're going to get harder and they'll start taking longer and there's more sections. So, so four. Four is a little bit different. I've had people get stuck on four. Like, there's been semesters where I don't do this problem and, like, someone will message me, like, what's going on? Like, it just has a different variable, right? Instead of x, it has theta. So theta is like your x, right? That's the only difference, okay? So the number hangs out. So the pi over 7 hangs out. Do you all remember, what was the derivative of sine? Cosine, yeah, just cosine. So you just put cosine, and that's it. That's it. You don't have to use the product rule because it's a number, right? If you had a theta there, then yeah, totally, you have to use the product rule. But because it's a number, you're good. Good. Is that Starbucks? It's good. It's good. Five. What do you mean with the, if there was a number where the theta was? Sorry, not a number. If it was a variable there. So if it was like, you know what? Let me do it. Let's just do it. Why not? Let's be different. Let's do it right now. Y equals theta cubed. Sounds like something from outer space. <laughs> Times tangent theta. Let's find the derivative of this thing. Theta cubed. It's like a cyborg. <laughs> theta cubed. <laughs> All right. So the product rule, um, I don't know if you remember, it was the derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second. So y prime. So it's the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of the first piece? 3 theta squared. 3 theta squared. Good. So that's the derivative of the first piece, right? Derivative of the first times the second, and then it's plus the first times the derivative of the second. Secum squared, good, yes, yes, you remember, oh my god. Do you all, have you all ever seen this before? Like, do you all know from this from other, other places? Like, no? Did you already know this before? Like, no, it's good, it's good. Most people have a really hard time with this. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, right? So again, it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So we didn't have to do that here because it was a number, right? So, so you don't have to do it. You could do it. If you do it here, you know what? Let's be weird. Let's do it. Why not, right? You're supposed to learn stuff. Check this out. If this is the first and this is the second, what's the derivative of pi over seven? Z zero. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So you get exactly the same thing because the derivative of a number is zero. So if you were to use the product rule here, um, you would just waste your time. But, <laughs> but, but it's instructive, right? It's good to see that it does work, right? So, so it does still work. So it's not necessary when you have a number because the zero will make the first term go away. Kind of cool, kind of cool. Um, number five, let's just keep going. I mean, we have time. We can just do as many as possible. So. Really cool. See if we can do 30 problems today. It's a nice, interesting goal. Can we do 30? I don't know. Wouldn't that be cool? What's, the, what's number five? Oh, really? That's it? Oh. oh. Easy still. Yeah, it's all right. It's good. Easy is good. So y prime. So we get uh, 28. 28x to the third plus 3 cosine. Yeah, the derivative of sine is cosine. Good stuff. Cosine x. All right. Let me see if there's any harder ones. I bet now they start getting harder. 6 looks difficult already. Oh, ah, my mouse. It broke. Okay, 6. Oh, yeah. 6, six is like test level. Let's do 6. Yeah. 6 is really evil. Um, I would never think of something like 6, but the homework does. So check this out. Um, it's really sneaky. So this is, this is a really good um, 
test question. I think I uploaded an old exam. 2x squared plus 8 cosine x. 8 cosine x. Okay, this one's really tough. Um, it's, this one was probably on the old exam that I uploaded. I'm not sure. It's a really good, really good problem. So the thing is, you could use the quotient rule here if you wanted to, um, but generally whenever you have like a number here, you want to avoid the quotient rule, okay? So we have a one here, so the trick is to rewrite this, like this. So the first step is you can just square each piece, right? So two squared is four, and then x squared is x squared. So we haven't taken the derivative yet, right? So it's still, it's still y. So the negative 3, because we're subtracting, right? And then what's the derivative of cosine? Do you remember? Sine negative, sine. negative sine. So it'll be minus 8 sine x, right? Because the derivative is negative sine. So the negative, you can put it over here, right? So you, that would give us that. Okay, and that's it. That's it. Oh, I thought I messed up. I was like, points. Uh, 2 over 4 is 1 half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually don't mess up though on that, but but good. Yeah. Oh! Messed up. All right. Wow, that's bad. Uh, good, good. I can't. I, and I didn't. I just say I usually don't mess up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So we're starting fresh now, right? Huh? No, we do. We do. All these names are gone. That's the past. All right. So exam two. Uh, what, what's your name? Luke. Luke. All right, Luke. Luke gets a point. Are we doing double? No, nothing. Yes. Double points because yeah, it's exam two. Down. Let's do double points. I won't mess up again. Yeah, so every mistake is two. Mm -hmm. yes. Just to prove you that I won't mess up again. Good work, Luke. I was about to say that and then I messed up. I was about to say, oh, we should do double points because I won't mess up. But I didn't say that and then I made the mistake. So just trying to be fair with myself. <laughs> okay, that's that one. Let's do some examples. Talking about um, this, this, this trick here. So check this out. This is really important. So let's look at this example here. Y equals, um, y equals a 1 over x plus, x squared plus, ah, 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 1 over x squared plus 1 cubed. Let's find the derivative of this. Okay, let's find the derivative of this. This is something that, that, that comes up. So this is a fraction, so you want to think maybe quotient rule. I want to show you how to avoid it. And so the reason you want to avoid the quotient rule in a problem like this is because you have a number here, okay? So whenever you have a number here, bring it up, okay? Oh, it's just better, okay? So let's do it. So step one is still y. So you bring it up, so it becomes x squared plus one to the negative three, right? This is really useful math, like this, these two examples which I'll show you. So now you can take the derivative and you can use the chain rule. It's just faster. So again, whenever there's a number, just bring it up, right? So y prime. So let's see. This will be, uh, ooh, you put the negative 3 in the front. So negative 3, parentheses, x squared plus 1. And then you would subtract 1. Negative 4. What's missing? What do you have to take now? The derivative of? The inside, which is 2x. It's a chain rule, right? So you, you bring down the 3, you leave the inside untouched, you subtract 1, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. The inside is x squared plus 1, its derivative is 2x. We're almost done, okay? The last thing to do is just multiply the negative 3 and the 2x. So it's going to be uh, negative 6x. And then most, most humans, um, they bring this down. So I'll bring it down. It just seems like a normal thing to do. And that's it. That's a beautiful answer. That's it. Like this? I minus one. Yeah, for not simplifying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now we're going to do a quotient rule problem just, just for practice. Uh, but the point is, whenever you have a number here, you want to avoid the quotient rule. We did it here too, right? We avoided the quotient rule, right? I could have put a 5 here, okay? If there was a 5 here, you just put a 5 here, right? It just hangs out, okay? Mm -hmm. Any questions on this one? It's a really important example. I wanted to make one up because I could do tons of homework and we'll never get to this. And this is like really important. Okay, so watch this. Let's do another one. 
So this is one I don't want to do, so we should do it. Say we have, uh, I'll try to make it easy, y equals x squared over uh, secant x. So this, this one is a fraction, but we don't have a number here, right? So we, you could still bring it up and use the product rule, but it's usually not a good idea. It usually makes things worse. So whenever you have like a variable over a variable and you can't simplify it, quotient rule. Okay, so quotient rule this time. And we can't really simplify this, right? So we're gonna use the quotient rule, yeah. Could you put like one over cosine and then bring the cosine up so it's x squared? So and then use the product rule? Yeah. Yes, that's even better, Aaron. Wow, that, that's, that's actually an easier way to do it. So I feel bad now for doing it the way I'm going to do it because Aaron's way is better. So Aaron is saying, oh, you're so smart, Aaron. Aaron is saying, you have this. Oh, oh good, Aaron, you're so good. Look, and then this is this, and this is this. So you can just use the product rule, and that's way better. So, but let's do it the hard way. So, <laughs> so, so just, just to do the quote. But Aaron's way is probably the way you want to do it, because he's Aaron. So quotient rule. <laughs> so, so it's a fraction. So it's the derivative of the first, so 2x, two, two right? So 2x times the second, or the bottom, so secant. What's the sign here, do you remember? Minus, yeah, good. Minus the first times, what's the derivative of secant? Do you remember? Secant tangent, yes! Secant tangent x, very good. Secant tangent x all over the second one to what power? Squared. Oh, this is horrible. We're not done. Oh, I should have done it in Aaron's way, but it's too late. So the derivative of the first times the second minus the first times the derivative of the second. Yeah, mo I don't like the quotient rule. Most people don't. It's the worst one, right? Uh, and typically, there's some simplification to be done. In this case, um, there is, right? What can we factor out that will cancel in the numerator? What is it? Secant x. Yeah, because there's a secant here, there's a secant here. So we should pull it out. So pull out the secant, so this will be, whoa. No, oh, look, look, it's touching. It's like chess, right? Like if you don't move your finger, it doesn't count. <laughs> I'm not gonna mess up again. It's, yeah, it won't happen. Yeah, no, it's not. That's why it's not gonna happen. Don't worry. Like, nah, you can, you can even just stop trying because it won't, won't, won't even like. <laughs> All right. Okay. And then and then these cancel, right? 2x. And Aaron's way was obviously better, right? Because Aaron's way is just cleaner. You just, use, you just use the product rule, right? Rewrite it and use the product rule. So that's really the best way. I really wasn't thinking about the problem when I wrote it down. Uh, I wasn't thinking about whether or not it could be simplified. I just assume it couldn't without really giving it much thought. So I was going to do x squared over sine, but I thought, no, I can put something harder, like a secant function there. And then I ruined, I ruined it. Good, Aaron. I wish I didn't give you a point for that, but. but. You don't, you don't need it. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions? Any questions on that one? Um, let's do number 11. Number 11 from the homework. 11 is different. So 11 is related to this one. So 11 is f of x equals, this is also a really good test question. It's usually, usually you have this strategy show up on your test. 7x cubed plus um, 3x squared over x. So this one, uh, you have variable over variable. When people are first learning calculus, they have a habit of always trying to bring things up. I mean, in theory you could do that, but it's just harder and it's typically not a good idea. In this case it'll work, right? But there is a more elegant and a more useful way uh, to simplify this. Um, whenever you have a monomial on the bottom, so one term, and two terms here, you can break this up and simplify it. So watch this. So you can write this as 7x cubed over x, okay, and then plus, and then again here, 3x squared over x. 
this is an uncomfortable thing for people to do because when from the beginning of our lives, like when we're taught to add, like when you have like one fifth plus two fifths, you do one plus two and you get three, right? But no one ever does this in math. No one ever does. Ooh, let's go backwards just because like it's fun like you don't do that in other classes right that's essentially what we're doing here right we're going from here to here it's a step that we don't normally do so we're going from here and we're, and we're breaking it up it's weird right so this is still oh is this f or is this f prime now still f it's f we're still simplifying right we're still simplifying so these cancel so we get seven x squared plus 3x plus 3x. Yeah, better marker. Yeah? If you don't put the f of x, but then at the end, put the f prime? That's, that's okay. It's pretty bad. But, I mean, okay. it's better to have, like, really good structure. Like, really show the work. It makes it, you should always be really clean. Like, yeah. It's better to have it. I might let it go, but you, you'll want to have it. Because, yeah, it's worth it. So now we're ready to take the derivative. So let's see, f prime of x. So this should be an easy derivative, right? Uh, 14x, 14x plus 3. That's it. That's it. Yeah? So is this way better than like just like factoring out the x in the numerator? That would have worked in this case also. Very good, uh, Luke. Um, that would have worked also. Um, I didn't think about that. But that would have worked. So Luke is saying you could have just factored out an x in the numerator. That would have worked as well. And actually would have made it easier, right? So Luke's way, again, is easier. So my, my, my ways are the hard ways. Um, so Luke's method is to do this. So the method of Luke. So Luke's way. Boom. Right? Much faster. And then you just get... And then you take the derivative. Perhaps the reason I didn't do it that way even though Luke's way is faster, uh, is because if you had something like, say you had something like this, um, you know, 2x squared plus 4 over x cubed. Let's try this one. All right, let's try this one. In this case, you can't factor out anything, right? So you do have to break it up. Do you all want to try this one on your own? Maybe you should try it. Try this one. This is a good test question. See if you can take take five minutes. We got time. We got time. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do problems for a while, so... I'll delete this, or not, or maybe, I'll, you know, still following me. It's warm, isn't it, Anais, the soda? I know, it was in my car, and I was late today, and I know, it's just, yeah, it's all right, it's better than nothing. It doesn't have any sugar in it, right, so we're good, or teeth, you know. a better marker while you all work on this. Let's see if I can get a better one. No, these are all terrible. Wow, there's so many markers here. It's like hundreds. It's a marker graveyard. So markers go to die. Get stuck. I'm just looking at what we did for 11. It makes sense. Oh, to break it up? Yeah. This over this and this over this. Yeah. Yeah. Luke's way is better. But in this problem, you can't use the Luke's way. Yeah. Yeah, it's important. And the reason you do it is because you have a plus here and you have a single term on the bottom. Right? We couldn't have done it here. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get it? Let's see, Aaron. That looks good. Is that what she got? Okay. No? Then one of you is wrong. Definitely. You think so? No, Rana! Did you get the same thing he got? It must be right, then it's you. No. Yeah, compare. See, work together. Did you get it? Neoma? Is that? Did you get it, Selena? Did you get it? 
Did you see what she got? Compare. <laughs> yeah. It's following me. Come on. Ah, I tricked it. Yeah. I think so. Is that what Logan got? It must be right. Yeah, just compare with the person next to you. If you got the same thing, it must be right. Looks like you both made the same mistake. It's not going to happen, right? Like, she got the same thing. She just didn't bring that. Oh, see, Rana, you got this. Yes. Oh, you can get an A. It's good. Yeah. Too bad you can't do that on a test. Well, just compare with your neighbor. Like, <laughs> right? Like, right? It'd be nice if we didn't have tests. I always think, like, I don't like tests. Because I have to grade them. Okay. Um, let's do a solution. Oh, this marker is horrible. Okay, so first thing you do is break it up, right? Yeah, but you leave them open. That's the well, these aren't mine. I, 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 yeah. So F of X. These, these don't work. So it's this over this. <laughs> Plus this over this. And again, the reason you want to do this, you'll know that you'll know to do this on a test because it'll look like this. You'll have like, you know, two or three terms up top, and you have a single term on the bottom, a monomial. That's what it tells you, okay? Um, so then this this cancels. So you have f of x. This is two over x, two over x, plus four over x cubed. So we're here. So we're still not in a good place, right? Because now we have two fractions. But now we have numbers here. And so whenever you have numbers up top. What do you do with the variables? Where do you bring them? Up. up. Yeah, it's a really useful strategy, right? It's not something you have to do, but it's something that, that is like a good thing to do. So it'd be 2x to the negative 1 plus 4x to the negative 3. I mean, you could use the quotient rule twice, but that's horrible, right? That's like, ugh. <laughs> so now we're ready to take the derivative. So now we'll write prime. So f prime of x. And so you just put the negative in the front. So negative 2x to the negative 2. And then minus 12x to the negative 4. Is that what you all got? Mm -hmm. Who got it right? Just curious. Oh, it's so good. Good, good, good. You got it right, right, Rana? You did, you did. What did you do? What, what was it that you did? I just didn't bring it back down. Yeah, like the negative. negative. Oh, you left it like this? Yeah. That's fine. Oh. No, you don't have to keep going. You don't have to bring it back down. No, no I don't care. No, I'll, be, I'll just be thrilled that you got it right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. And what happens on the test, this causes a lot of problems. It's always on the test, but then people will use the quotient rule, and it's huge. Or sometimes I'll give them this problem, and I'll say, find the second derivative. Oh, you want to find the second derivative? We're here. Let's do it. Let's do it. So f double prime. Because I'll never do it. I think last semester, I didn't even do it once. Like, I, I forgot. All you do is take the derivative again of this. Super easy. So negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. Yeah, I mess up there. It'd be bad. Then x <laughs> to negative 3. And then 4 times 12 is 48x to the negative 5. <laughs> Thanks. Who got that? All right. Okay, fine. All right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's good. No, it won't happen again. It's not going to happen again. I'm going to drink all of this. Block that. It's following me. All right. So. It won't happen again. Okay. <sighs> Got to wake up. Any questions on this one? All right. Let's keep going. Wow, what is going on here? Some crazy problems. We'll have to do some of those next time. Uh, I'm going to go to a different section. There's some hard homework, but I'm, I'm going to move on to something else. 2, 3. Let's see what's in 2, 3. I just want to do a couple from each section. Here we go. 2, 3, number 1. Let's do it. Great, 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 great test level question. Two, three, number one. Two, three, number one. <clears throat> so, anyone have two, three up? Because I already forgot what it was. You don't have it up, I know you. F of X, thanks, thanks, Neoma. <laughs> Cosine of X? Okay, I trust you. Give me the wrong one, get two points, no. <laughs> All right, what, uh, what, what rule? Pro 
products, good Aaron, products rule. Absolutely, right? Because it's a function of x times a function of x. So this is like the ultimate product rule question because it's not too hard. Do you all want to try it or should I do it first? Really? Okay, go for it, try it. Take your time, take, I didn't, okay, yeah, wow. <laughs> On fire, like what the hell? <laughs> This is a really, really good problem for a test because it doesn't require a lot of simplification. Nice, you got it already? It's pretty cool. Did you compare with Aaron? You got it already? J Austin? No. no. You got stuck? Oh, you, oh, do you know how to do it or no? Do you know the rule? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Did you get it? Maybe? No. What kind of dog do you have, Ethan? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Those, are, those are interesting dogs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so cool shoes. Yeah, these are very comfortable. Nice, what are they? They're rubber duck boots for my house. I work at a boat mechanic shop, but I clean boats. Oh, hardcore. Yeah. Yep. It's cool. I need to get new shoes. Mine are like wearing out. I got these at Aldi's for like $15. <laughs> yeah, all these shoes. I know, it's so bad. That's like <laughs> the cheapest shoes. <laughs> I don't know, a couple months, but I use them. But I only wear shoes here, but yeah, a couple months, yeah. Yeah, I always wear sandals. Oh, you're barefoot? Yeah, I wear flip flops when I go out usually. I put my Alexa alarm. That's one alarm. You have Alexa? Yeah. I'm sorry. And I have my phone alarm. I had Alexa. I, was, I thought it was listening to me, so I got scared. Like, <laughs> I gave it back. To, my brother got it for me for Christmas. I'm like, no, it's like it's hearing my, you know, just yeah. Because if you say Alexa, like it sends it, right? It scared me last night. What did it do? Because it just like I was sleeping. It was like 2 a.m. Right, and I was like, you know, already in bed, and that thing did like a sound, and I was like, whoa. I know you just like what's that called? Turn here. Lights up and talks to you. All right, so it's the derivative of the first. So, times the second plus the first. Yeah, but I'll 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 show that step because I'm. But you you can do it if you want to. Times yeah. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Yeah. So you can skip a step here. I didn't want to though because um, you know it's a classroom. Um, so it's, it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So you could skip a step if you want, but again, I don't like doing that. And then, then just put the negative here. That would be the last step. So it would be 7x to the 6th, cosine x. What a great problem. Minus x to the 7th, sine x. So that's the product rule. Who got it right? Just curious. Oh, good. Oh, you got it, Nick. All right. Yeah, it's good. No, it's good. It's great. Oh, it's so good. Oh, wow, wow, oh my god, okay. Um, let's, I don't want to do any of these, they're all hard. Um, that means we should. Let's do number five. Number five is not a fun problem, let's do it. But there's always one like this on your exams, why? Because it's calculus one, right? Like, like number five. The stuff like this has to usually show up on tests, right? It's unfortunate, it's an unfortunate thing. It's the worst ones. So f of x, it's a three minus five x All over x squared, minus five. x squared minus five. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the classic. Well, I don't want to say it, but what kind of what, what rule do we use for this one? <laughs> quotient rule. Yeah, this is the classic quotient rule problem. We really can't do anything, right? Like, it, you can't really simplify it in a nice way. You have variables over variables. So this is one of the ones where you just have to suck it up 
and you usually only have one of these on your exam. So if you find yourself using the quotient rule like six times on the test, you're working way too hard, right? So usually you only have to do it once on these, okay? So I'll actually do it for you maybe. So, so f prime of x, or I'll help, I'll help you, let's do it together, f prime of x. So it's the derivative of the first, or top piece. So that one's kind of annoying. So this is zero, this is uh, negative five, negative five minus two x. Yeah, it's the derivative of the top piece or the first piece, right? Negative five minus two x times the bottom piece or the second piece. So x squared minus five, and then minus, minus, and then it's the top piece, the, that entire thing, that ridiculous thing, three minus five x minus x squared times the derivative of the bottom piece. So the two x, two x. Yeah, I don't like these at all. Is it? Uh, it's two x. Mm -hmm. All over the bottom piece squared, right? The whole bottom piece is squared now. So x squared minus five quantity squared. So we're here, so we're here. And then you have to simplify it. That's the part that's not fun. <laughs> that's why you want to do it. Um, this is gonna happen a lot though, like in the later sections. So it's one of those things. So again, let's check the derivative of the top piece. <laughs> minus five minus two x times the bottom piece minus the top piece times the derivative of the bottom piece. So now we have to simplify it, so let's do it. So basically you just distribute. You do this, you take this one and multiply it by these. Take this one, multiply it by these. So it'll be negative 5x squared. And then uh, plus 25, right, plus 25. So plus 25. Then negative 2x cubed, so negative 2x cubed. Plus 10x, plus 10x. We'll go over that again, just make sure I did it right. So negative 5x squared plus 25, negative 2x cubed plus 10x, right? I'm not a fan of this. I don't like this at all. But again, it's one of those things in math. I mean, you just, you, you're just supposed to be able to do it. This negative is going to get distributed at the same time as this 2x, right? So you distribute both. So it'll be negative 6x, right? Negative 6x. It's all about algebra. Like how your algebra becomes really good. Ooh. What's the next term going to be? Positive or negative? Plus 10x squared. Good. You see it? Plus 10x squared. Because this, this, and this give you a positive 10x squared. Yeah, it's really annoying, but again, you get good at it. And the last one is also plus 2x cubed. Yeah, 2x cubed. All over this. People say, like, you know, calculus is just, just, you just have to be good at algebra. But I think you become good at algebra when you're taking this class. Like, this is when your algebra actually gets better, right? Like, you get really good at it uh, because you have to do tons of stuff like this and, and more. Uh, okay, now we just have to clean everything up. Oh, look! <laughs> they go away, the cubes, right? This is a happy day. It feels like we're doing it right. Um, the x squared terms would be negative 5 and a 10. That's just going to be 5. So 5x squared um, plus 4x. So plus 4x uh, plus 25. All over the bottom piece. So x squared minus 5 squared. Thankfully, we don't have to take the second derivative. That would be really bad. Yeah. You've canceled out one of the x squared minus 5s since you have a squared in the denominator. No. You would need another one here. Then you would need to factor it out and then cancel. Okay. Good question. Good question. Mm -hmm. No, you just leave. Yeah, leave the bottom like that. Yeah, we tend to leave it like that. In 3.6, we'll have to take the derivative again. In 3.4, but that's, your, um, that's the third test. That's brutal. That's like... 3.4 is brutal. We'll spend the whole day on 3.4. Which one's the worst test? The fourth one. The fourth test. Sometimes people do bad. They get Fs sometimes. So, no. <laughs> it's true. The final's easier, though. The final's not. It'll, so, it, so, did you get a really bad grade on that test? 
The final can replace it, yeah. The final is usually pretty good. No one failed the final last semester. Yeah, I make the final, so it's, we review. We have a full review day. It's not bad. So you can have a bad test and still get an A. Yeah, it's all right. So if, you had, if your first test was bad, don't worry. It's all right. It's whatever. Yeah. So who cares? But you'll get an A. Just don't, just don't get another bad grade. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's like, do good on this one. If two bad grades, then it's like, this test is more important, right? Because you can do bad on the first test, and like, this is different, right? But if you do bad on this test, then it's, ugh. Um, let's do... Well, that's a bunch of hard. Let me let me look at two. Ah, uh, we should do we should do number fourteen. Let's do fourteen, 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 fourteen. So fourteen. Some interesting problem. Anyone have it there? Have fourteen. Oh, it's y equals. Okay. What? Like this. Sine x, x all over two like this. Okay, great question. I'm trying to think of like stuff that's like on the old exam stuff you typically see. I'm trying to make all the examples count. Uh, maybe after this one we can take a break if you want, you know, and then and then keep doing examples. So because um, there's, there's a lot of good homework we should probably do. So um, so any ideas for this one? This one's a little bit harder. Any any suggestions or ideas for this one? No. What would you do? Any any ideas? Anyone? If you, if this was on a test, and like if you were in a room and you couldn't eat, so you had to take this derivative, like <laughs> like, 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 like if your life depended on it. <laughs> huh? You distribute the seven. Yes. And then split them apart. Yes. And then get its hand on one. Yes. That's it. So break it up. Right, break it up. Don't use the quotient rule. That's the worst thing you can do. So rewrite it. Just try to break it up. Distribute the seven and then go go from there. So seven times one is seven. Seven times time sine ah seven times sine is seven sine. So we're here. It's all over two cosine x. And now we'll break it up. Yeah, we're gonna break it up into two pieces. So it'll be this over this minus this over this. So now we break it up. So y equals, so 7 over 2 cosine x minus, and then I'm, I'm not going to write it as tan yet. I'll, I'll, I will in the next step. I'm showing some extra steps, right? Showing some extra steps. Yeah, after this one, we'll take a break, like 15 minutes, and then we'll just keep going over math uh, right after the break. Because there's, there's plenty of homework, like, I think. It's worth it. So there's a lot of homework. There's a lot of hard homework. Tons. So we're here. Any questions up to here on this one? On this one. Mm -hmm. Ah, I see, Reese. Uh, you're thinking of this one. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So cosine squared is yeah. And then also sine squared. So each of them is one minus the other one squared. Good question, Reese. Good. No, it's worth it. It's good. It's good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, this is seven halves, and then what's one over cosine? What function is that? Do you all know? Secant. Yeah. So this is secant. It's still y, by the way. We haven't we haven't differentiated yet, so it's still it's still y, and then minus uh, seven halves, and then sine over cosine is tangent. Yeah, tangent. So now we're finally at a place where we can take the derivative. So all of this is just rewriting, right? Rewriting of the original problem just to get to a place where we can differentiate. How would you know to do this? Just practice, experience, right? You do the homework, um, like you see it. You know quotient rule is like really horrible. So now let's take the derivative and we'll finish. So y prime, so y prime. Um, so what's the derivative of secant? Do you all remember? Secant tangent, yeah. So secant tangent, secant tangent. And so minus, and then 7 halves. And then what's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared, secant squared. Mm -hmm. Good, that's it. Any questions on this one? Any questions? Any questions? All right, let's take, yeah, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. After that, can you pull out a secant and simplify? You could, but I don't think you could simplify. 
but you could. Good question. Any other questions on this one? So let's take 50, take 15, like a regular break, and then after the break, we'll just keep going, I think. Maybe we should just do more examples. There's a lot of hard homework, so, uh, so let's take, take 15. I'll turn this off so it doesn't follow me. Stop. Now it's on. Okay, it's good. What's the derivative of tangent? Do you all know? Secant, secant. secant squared, yeah. So this is going to be very similar to that. So the 5 will hang out. This will be 5 times secant squared of 6x times 6. Yeah, what rule is that? Chain. chain. It's a chain rule, right? It's a chain was the derivative of the inside, right? Super important. I love the chain rule. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. You, you leave the inside untouched, and then you multiply by the derivative of that inside function. Uh, the derivative of 6x six is 6. Now you can multiply these, right? So you're going to get 30 secant squared of 6x, and this will be g prime, g prime of x, g prime of x. That's it. That's it. So nice, nice easy warm-up uh, problems, warm-up problems. We should probably do number nine. I don't want to do it. That means we probably should do it. So let's do it. Number nine. Number nine. So it's g of x. No, it's y. Sorry, it's y. y equals, and it's written kind of funny. It's cosine of, of pi x to the fifth. Okay. So you could just take the derivative, or you can do a little bit of rewriting before you do it. Let's maybe do a little bit of rewriting. We can raise each of these pieces to the fifth power on the inside. So it's still y. So this is cosine of pi to the fifth, x to the fifth, right? Pi to the fifth, x to the fifth. So it's pi to the fifth, x to the fifth, like that. Right? Pi to the fifth, x to the fifth. Boom. Oh, wow, what's that? Oh, number 10 looks scary. Well, I think we should try it because I don't know how to do it. Um, What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. It's got that negative. It's like really annoying. Ugh. So it's negative sine. Of, ooh, this is weird. Pi to the fifth, x to the fifth, oh, times. I guess this pi to the fifth is a constant, so it hangs out, right? So it'll be 5 pi to the fifth, running out of room, times x to the fourth power. Very good. G good. Good. It's not Joey, is it? It's Joshua. Joshua. Oh, I thought it was Joey. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so again, you put the 5 in the front, and this is a constant. So you get, It's like 5x to the fourth, and the pi to the fifth hangs out. Right? The pi to the fifth hangs out. I guess the last thing to do is maybe just put this in the front. Right? So this will be y prime equals negative 5 pi to the fifth x to the fourth sine of pi to the fifth. It's really confusing, isn't it? The pi to the fifth is really like terrible. Like I, I, it just looks really comp weird. We don't really usually see pi to the fifth anywhere. You know, it's, I mean, what is pi to the fifth? Did, did, I, did I mess up? Why don't you bring the 5x, like, and when you, you take the derivative of x to the fifth, why don't you bring the 5x? Why, why is it not 5x4? It is. It's 5x. Five five. I know, isn't it weird? I know, I was, I was confusing myself too. Yeah, so it's 5x to the 4, but I put the 5 here, because this hangs out. So I put the 5 in the front. Good question. Everyone see that? 5 goes in the front. It's weird. It's uncomfortably difficult. Yeah, the pi to the 5th is like, ah! <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> Number 10 looks really interesting. Um, I, I think we should try it. I don't know what's going to happen, so let's, let's, let's try to do it. Number, number 10. Number 10. So it's uh, f of x equals cotangent of x over sine of x. So f of x equals cotangent of x over sine of x. So cot x, that's not cot x. I don't know why I'm writing so big. Over sine x, over sine x. So I'm thinking, taking Aaron, Aaron's approach, the Aaron way, uh, of rewriting this maybe, might be a good idea. Um, I, I don't know if it's actually going to help, though. Because uh, which one is cotangent? Cotangent is what over what? Yeah, so if we rewrite it, isn't it just going to be cosine over sine squared? Is that really going to help us at all? So, uh, 1 minus cosine squared. That just makes it worse. Sine x. Hmm? And when it simplified 1 over sine x, and that would be cosine 
Well, if you had, let me do it over here. If you have cotangent of x over sine x, if you write it as cosine x over sine x, let's just try it on the side, over sine x, that's the same thing as cosine x over sine x times 1 over sine x. So it becomes this. Yeah, but we have to use the quotient rule. So this is worse. <laughs> so. If you pull the sine x out and go cot uh, cotangent x times 1 over sine, that would be? Cotangent times cosecant. cosecant. And you can use like a product rule? Yeah. You want to do that? Yeah, let's okay, let's try that. I was just going to do a quotient, but okay. All right, let's do that. So let's do it the Aaron. Let's try that. That might, that might be better. Okay, that's really clever. So Aaron's way is very clever. I, I, this, this is like crazy. So he's thinking we can do this, just really avoiding the quotient rule at all costs. Like, <laughs> and then so 1 over sine is uh, cosecant. Yeah, so this is cotangent cosecant. So now we can take the derivative of this, right, using the product rule. You could have just used the quotient rule as well, right? I was just going to use the quotient rule until Aaron suggested that it's a little bit faster. But you could also just use the quotient rule. All right, so now we'll use the product rule, right? So let's do it. So it's the derivative of the first times the second. So what, what's the derivative of cotangent x? Do you all remember? Negative cosecant squared x. Very good. Oh, this is going to give us a really pretty solution. So it's the derivative of the first times the second, so which is cosecant x. <coughs> okay, we're going to get a cosecant cube. It's beautiful. Plus um, the first times the derivative of cosecant, which was cosecant. yeah, cosecant cotangent. Yeah. It's a good problem. I'm kind of glad we did it this way because it's forcing us to take these uncomfortable derivatives, which don't really come up that much, right? So, so it's good practice. We, these aren't that popular. Let's go over that again carefully. So we could have used the quotient rule, but Aaron had an idea of writing it this way and using the product rule. So I figured, why not? Let's try it. Let's be different. This is a little bit easier. It's a product rule, right? So the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. I guess now we can just combine these cosecants, right? So this will be negative cosecant um, cubed x. And this one is going to be minus cotangent squared and then cosecant. You can probably rewrite this, like factor stuff out and, and do some identity type stuff, but I don't really want to. I think we should just stop there. So cotangent and cotangent is cotangent squared, right? That's how we got that. So nice problem. Pretty, pretty tough, pretty tough. Yeah, one semester I put one like this on the test, except it simplified to sine x. <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> it was, and yeah, so it made it you know, easier. If you, if you knew to simplify it, right? If you knew to simplify it. So that was number 10. Any questions on, on number 10? Any questions on number 10? We should probably do number 11. It's a little bit different. Let's, let's do it, number 11. Number 11. So number 11, we have um, little g of t, little g of t, and this is equal to uh, 5, 5 parentheses cosine of pi t. And the thing is, this is actually squared. So the whole thing is squared, right? The entire cosine function is squared, okay? A little bit, a little bit different, a little bit different in this one. Wow, so much homework. Uh, all right, so, whoa, okay, wrong one. The 12 is almost identical. So you do have to use the chain rule here, right? So you have something to a power. So you basically take the derivative and bring the two down. Um, so let's do it. So g prime of t, g prime of t. So we'll put the two in the front, so we multiply, right? So two times five, so it's 10, it's 10, yep, good. And then it will be cosine pi t, Oh, this is hardcore, to the 1, right, to the 1, times the derivative of the inside. So what was the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Negative sine. And it's another chain rule now, right? So it'll be times negative sine pi t times, what would go here? Pi. It's a double chain rule. I love these problems. It's like chain, chain, chain. 
The very end. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. You gotta keep going until you get to the very end. Yeah, it's great. Isn't that beautiful? That's why I love a chain rule. I love like the quadruple chain rules, like chain, 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 chain. So, so negative, oh, 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 nothing, nothing, I'm good, I'm good. I thought I messed up. Two times five is 10. I thought there was supposed to be a negative there. I'm like, I forgot the negative. Two times five is 10. And then you leave that untouched. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of pi t is pi. Last thing to do is maybe put the negative pi out front with the 10, right? To be negative 10 pi, cosine pi t, sine pi t. And that would be the final, the final answer. I think maybe you all should try number 12. I'll write it on the board. It's a really good example, a really good follow-up uh, to, to this one. So g of g of theta is cosine of 5 theta cubed. So g of theta, I'll, I'll take your time, is cosine of 5 theta cubed. 5 theta, and this is cubed. Take your time. Take your time. Yes, yeah, my handwriting is terrible. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll do better. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, I hate fives. I have a hard time with fives. I just wish I had good handwriting. I do like the, the curly part, and then I add the, the straight line at the top. So you do, what do you mean? Like I do the, yeah. like this? Yeah, then I add that. Oh! Oh, it's so cool. Like this? Uh. Uh. What did you do last time? Uh. I do this. I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I don't even know. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I always used to like, do the same thing with like, like S's. Like, yes, like, yes. My S's in other math classes look like this. I use a cursive S because of, of my issue with the five. Yeah. Ah, good, Josh. Good, good tips. <laughs> yeah, try to do some. Take your time. Take, take, take whatever. As much time as you want. Work together. Make friends. All that stuff. <laughs> Some crazy problems. <clears throat> we should do 15 after this because it's ridiculous. Yeah. So would you just would you just try like to keep the square over here? Mm-hmm. Or try the square here also? No, you're good there. And then times five now. Yeah. Yeah. Good work. Good Jack. This stuff. This stuff seem hard to you all? Like this seem difficult? No, not really. Easy. Has anyone here had calculus before? Like, you haven't had it. You had it. What, were you had it before? In high school. In high school. Mm -hmm. Selena, have you had calculus before? A little bit. A little bit. Because you knew like the derivative of x squared. Like, yeah. I think that's right. Is that what uh, Jack got? I think so. Yeah, it looks right. Yeah. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, 15, right? You got a 15 out front? Negative. Negative 15? Okay, must be right. Good. So when you would hit this, when you hit square, you don't have to keep going to get it to one? No, you just you just move on to the net. You just keep moving on to the inside piece. Okay. So you just keep going inside, 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 inside. You'll see the one we're gonna do 15 after this. It's completely ridiculous. Yeah, it's like it's like a quadruple chain rule. It's horrible. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Like typing it in the homework is harder than doing it. Like. Yeah. yeah. And on like the last homework, there was the you gotta do the ranges and like domains and all that, where you have like infinity and union. Yeah. It was, yeah. And I missed all the images so many times, so it was like... <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. Because when you hit the Y, it turns into the symbol. Yeah, I know, yeah. You don't think that. Oh, it's matter. Sometimes when it turns into pi, that was Yeah, pi is just pi, right? Yeah, but then sometimes it wouldn't. Yeah. pi. Yeah. So oh, weird. Pi and then the i would well, change to the imaginary i. Like yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. That's horrible. <laughs> 
Oh no, what happened to the marker? Uh, let's see, I thought I had a better one. What's this? Yeah, here we go. All right, let's do it. So G prime, G prime of theta. So this is something to a power, right? So you leave the inside untouched. You put the three in the front. So three cosine, five theta, to the what? What power goes here? Two, two, dos. Dos means two in Spanish. Times. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Negative sine. So when you do this, by the way, I noticed, I noticed, I'm sorry, Ethan did it right. Sorry, I'm just calling out Ethan. But, but I noticed sometimes people do it wrong. Um, make sure you have a parentheses here, right, for clarity. Because if you don't put it there, you might think it's a minus. You know what I mean? So five theta times what? Five. five. There's my ugly five. Yeah, times five. Because that's the chain rule, right? The derivative of the inside. It's just inside, 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 inside. Beautiful stuff. Maybe just put it all out front. It's going to give us a negative 15. Yeah, negative 15. Nice problem. Parentheses cosine of 5 theta squared. squared. Thanks. Sine of 5 theta. Starting to fade. I feel like mistakes are going to happen. Yeah. If you had an equation that had two different variables, would the other variable that's not like of your function does that just stay as it is? Very good question. So sometimes um, it depends. If, if it says it's a constant, you would treat it as a constant. In calculus three, what happens is, here, I'll just show you. So why not, just a really quick aside, why not, since you asked, this is a really good question, just, just for fun. I can't believe I'm showing you this, but it's okay, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with learning some extra math. Say you have, bye! So, so, so say you have x squared, y squared, plus x squared, plus y squared. We have time, it's good to learn stuff, right? So this is a function of two variables, right? So how do you find the derivatives here? So when you have functions of two variables, you take what's called partial derivatives, right? So instead of dy dx, we do this symbol here like this, del. D-E-L, like deli. So it's del F, del X. So this is, so that's how you read it. It's, del, it's fun, right? It's del, 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 del. It's just, it's just read del. So del F, del X. So how do you do that? You pretend all of the Y's are numbers. They're constants. So this is a constant, right? So watch this. So if this is a constant, it hangs out. What's the derivative of X squared? 2X. Oh, the, what's the derivative of X squared? 2x. What's the derivative of a number, of a constant? Right? So when you do del f del x, everything else is constant except x. So let's try this one. Del f del y. So not all the x's are constants. So this is a constant. It hangs out. So this hangs out. So we just get 2x squared y. Right? Because the x is a constant. Right? Because it's del f del y. Oh, this is the constant, so what's the derivative? Zero. Zero. And what's this derivative going to be? Just 2y. That's calculus 3 right there. That's all calc 3, right? So that's what happens in calc 3. There's one in the homework where you have a c, and, and I think it's in 2.4, but it tells you c is a constant, so the derivative is 0. Yes, Josh? So this really doesn't matter, but how do you like spell that? That, oh, that's a really good question. I'm so glad you asked. I am pretty sure it's just del. Like the laptop. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, like Dell, without the E. Like, cause now I'm hungry, but no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think it's like fatter. When it's tight, it's like really fancy. I, I think they exaggerate, like Dell. <laughs> yeah, that's Calc 3. All right, let's do something really hard. Number 15, super hard. This is just insane. 15. So why is it in the homework? I don't know, but it's good for you. This is good. It's good to do hard stuff. Y of X. So I'm going to write it in a different way. I'm going to put some extra stuff on it. So it has a square root here, but I'm going to put a bracket here for clarity. Cosine of tangent of pi x. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Right? It's what dreams are made of, whatever that means. Okay. So the first step is to rewrite this thing, right? I'll, I'll let you write it down first, and then we've got to rewrite it carefully, and then we'll just take the derivative. This one's a real pain because you have to type it in correctly. So, um, oh, what was that? That's really cool. Oh, 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 sorry. That's a really cool sound, like, whoa. <laughs> sorry. Is it all going to be like 
to the one half. Time. Yeah, this is going to be to the one half. So whenever you have a square root, you write it to the one half. So step one, let's rewrite. I'm just going to put y. So we have sine. I like the bracket because it adds clarity for me at least. Then it's parentheses cosine, parentheses tangent of pi x. I said, why am I writing smaller? I don't know. Just clarity, maybe. Right, just for added clarity. See how I did that? The square root becomes the one half. Take your time. Take your time. All right, write it down. I'll, I'll wait. We got time. And next time we'll do we'll we'll do more problems like this next time too. Like more hard ones and there's plenty of stuff we haven't done, word problems. Everyone see what we did there with the square roots? I'll wait, I'll wait. It's a lot to, it's a lot it's a lot to copy down. It's a lot of writing. So this whole square root piece turns into a one half. Okay. Would it just be the chain rule? Oh yeah, it's multiple chain rules. That's why I'm pausing. So I'm waiting, like, make sure everyone's written it down because this, this this step is like critical. So yeah. Sine must be to the, the first power. power. Yeah, it's just to the first power. So the what's the derivative of sine? Cosine. Cosine. So that's the first step. So let's just do it. Okay, let's do it. I don't know why I'm nervous. Okay, why prime? <laughs> like, I'm nervous to do it. So it's cosine of all of that stuff. So you leave the inside untouched. So parentheses cosine. Parentheses 10, pi x. My friend taught me this. Watch this. Look. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. You can count parentheses. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, see? Because it's so confusing, you forget how many parentheses there are. So look, look, look. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. You have to have the same number. I know. I was like, oh, that's deep. Uh, times. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. So it's, it's the derivative of the inside. Um, so you have to put the one half in the front now. Chain rule here, right? So one over two. No, no leave the inside untouched, right? Cosine. Oh, I know. It's so insane. It's, this is just life. Negative one half times. I'll pause here. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I love this problem. Is it a quadruple? Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty nuts. I don't even know. Come on. All right. So let's see. So we took the derivative of sine. That's cosine. We left the inside untouched. Now we're working on just this piece, right? So so we take the one half, put it in the front, so like it puts us here. We leave the inside untouched. We subtract one. Now we're taking the derivative of this. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine, so it's parentheses, negative sine, tangent pi x. Times, it's ridiculous. <laughs> the derivative of tangent secant squared pi x. Then times pi, very good, Josh. Times pi. I know, I know, my, hand, my hand's gonna fall off. No, I'm kidding, it's not. It's a <laughs> so check that. So let's see. So the, the, the most, I think the most important thing is to add these brackets. Like in the, in the original question, they're not there, right? So you really have to just put parentheses in a place that will help you do the problem. So I like to add these, and I feel like, and notice the size difference, right? Notice how this is bigger than this, and I tried to make these smaller, and these even smaller, just for my own benefit. If you make them all the same size, like it looks like this, look. Watch. If I write it down all the same size, look how confusing this looks. Okay, 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 okay. See, sign, parentheses, parentheses. Oh, this is so confusing. I don't even know if I can do it. Cosine, tangent, pi x. Okay, how many do I have? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I forgot, I forgot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One, two, one, two. Th th isn't that confusing? That's super confusing. It's horrible. That's bad. So it's helpful to make them different sizes, right? So the derivative of sine is cosine. Leave the inside untouched. Take this derivative. You put the one half in the front, leave the inside untouched. Subtract one. Take this derivative. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Leave the inside untouched. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Leave the inside untouched. Derivative. How many chain rules was that? Four? Five. Five? Okay, it was a lot. 
Yeah. We're not done. We have to simplify it. <laughs> so, so, can everyone see down here? I'll do it up here to make it even more confusing. Okay. So y prime. <laughs> so let's figure out like what's going to stay up top. So obviously it's a fraction. That's the first step, right? So I guess the let's put this top up top first. Um, so this is still up top, right? Yep. So cosine. So cosine. And it's a, that's a square root. So I'm going to write it as a square root to make it look better. So square root cosine tangent pi x. Uh-uh. Uh. So that's this piece. Beautiful. And then this is going to come downstairs. Um, so I guess I can write that down, right? So, and when it comes downstairs, it's a one half power, it becomes positive, so it's also a square root. So it's gonna be, oh, oh, the pi, you can put the pi in the front too. So I'll put that here. What about that one half in the front? Yeah, let's put that two here as well. Let's do that as well, yep, and do this. Square root, cosine, tangent pi x, good idea. Should we put the negative also? Negative? Yeah, we can do the negative as well. I didn't see that, let's do the negative as well. Good, let's do the negative as well. So I'll put the negative, I'll put it up top. There it is. All right, so we've taken care of the one half, the negative, and the, and the pi. We've taken care of this. This one stays upstairs, right? The san, sa, sine, a san. I called it san because it was sine of tangent. That's a new function, san x. No, it's this, <laughs> the sine of the tangent of pi x. And then almost done, right? What's left? Secant squared of pi x. So we didn't have very much on the bottom, did we? We just had that piece, so it looks really weird. So there's all this space there, so I'll just leave it like that. Looks ridiculous. That would have been better, yeah, sure. That's pretty clever, smart. Yeah, you could have done that as well, to fill in this blank space here. Yep, mm -hmm, you could do that as well. Someone should try to type it in if you want. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely write it down, though, so uh, yeah. Anyone like this problem? Oh no, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> we should do another one like this. Yeah, a little different though. Like, I mean, there's a bunch we haven't done, but I, I figured we should do this one next. It's number uh, number 23. Number 23. Let's try that one. 23. 23 seems like. Go ahead, take a picture. Yeah, go for it. It's worth it. It's good. 23. <laughs> 23. So 23 is g of x, no, 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 20, no, it's f of x, f of x. This looks like something like out of like an extra credit problem or something. It just looks really hard. Square root of, just to leave, all right, bye. Anyone have it up, 20, 23? Four plus. Like this? Yeah. That's it? That's the problem? Okay. All right. Fun times. Okay. So, do you all want to try it or should I just do it? We have six minutes. Just to be, you want to try it? No. Try it, try it. Take two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Go, try it, try it, try it. Oh, yeah, try it. It's really hard. And again, when you, I'll just talk while you try it, um, just to say stuff. Uh, don't forget, you're going to get stuck in the homework. So, so expect to get stuck, right? But next time we'll do more, so. So what you get stuck on, we can do next time. So, so try to get stuck and we'll do them next time in class. Because the word problems only take us like 45 minutes next time, if that. Like we'll blow through the word problem stuff. So we'll be able to do lots of homework in class. All the square roots become one halves, right? Yeah. I've never taken attendance in this class, except the first week. You hope you're all in the class. <laughs> like.
Who's Bradley? Bradley. Bradley. Oh, forget them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I got the roster. Like I have all these names here. I just make sure like people are in the class. It's good. Hmm? You think you got it? We compare with Austin. You didn't get it. I'll come look. Well, yeah, compare with him. Yeah, because this thing will follow me. Who's Thomas? Thomas. Thomas. Okay. I didn't. I didn't simplify it. Oh yeah, it's okay. What's crazy? You got it, Logan? No. I should do it. We only have four minutes. I should do it. Let's do it. All right. So first step. Whoa. Is to rewrite everything in terms of square roots. So let's see. So. This whole thing is a square root, right? So this whole thing is a one half power. So it's like this, right? Well, I'm, I'm still writing f. Ah, I see. Okay, this four is this four. This plus is this plus. This thing is a one half power. So this is plus is this plus, and this is a one half power. That's the first step. So notice how I work from the outside in. I wrote the one half down first for the plus. This is this, and this is this. So that's the hardest part, I think, is the rewriting, in my opinion. At least in my, I, I have a harder time with that. I have an easier time with the derivative and a harder time with this step for some reason. Then maybe that's not common. I don't know. OK, so now we're going to take a derivative. So f prime of x. So you put the one half in the front. Right, so one half, parentheses four plus parentheses six plus x to the one half to the one half, negative one half times the derivative of the inside, right? So this is zero. So in this one is another chain rule, right? So one half, six plus x to the one half to the negative one half times, so let's see, so one half, leave the inside untouched, negative one half, take this derivative, and then when you're taking this derivative, you do this, subtract one, now it's the derivative of this, right? So one half x to the negative one half. So it's a little bit, yeah. So I did that, but I just left it with square roots. Oh. That's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Now we're going to simplify it. It shouldn't be too bad, I hope. Um, but let me, let me go over it again. We still have like three minutes, so that's good. We still have two minutes. A minute and 55 seconds. Okay, so we have this to the one half. <laughs> right, put the one half in the front, so we're here. Subtract one, okay? And then um, take the derivative of this. This is zero, so this derivative here, it's one half. Leave this untouched, subtract one, you get here. Take this derivative here, this is zero. This derivative here is one half x to the negative one half. So we're good. Let's clean it up. Um, I'll, I'll do it here. So I think it's going to be a fraction. Oh, wow, almost everything is going to go downstairs, right? Yeah. Wow, that's ridiculous. Okay, so we have one. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right, it's all going down. Oh, look, two times two times two is eight. So we can have an eight here. And then this is a giant square root on the bottom, right, that one. So square root, 4 plus square root, 6 plus root x. Wow, that's that. That is that beast. And then we have this other square root here, 6 plus square root of x, 6 plus square root of x. And then we have this other square root here, which is just square root of x. Beautiful problem. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. So we did some harder ones today. There's a lot of other conceptual stuff in the homework we haven't done, like different questions that we haven't encountered. Uh, we'll do them next time. But until then, like try to do as much homework as you can. And if you get stuck, 
Next time we can do whatever you get stuck on. So try the homework, right? So we'll do the word problems next time and we'll do anything you get stuck on, we'll do, right? We'll do, we'll do next time. That's it. That's it. Continue. Continue, continue, continue. Two, 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 four. Uh, continue. This thing will shut off. But it shut off in my other class. It'll stop. It overheats because it's so hot. That's how you know it's hot. Like when that thing overheats. Also charging. Yeah, yeah, it's really hot in here. So let's talk about rates of change. Rates of change. Rates of change. Some notes, and then we'll, we'll jump in and do some problems. So rates of change. Rates of change. So we'll let y be equal to f of x. And we're going to define what's called the average rate of change of the function. So the average, this comes up in the homework as well, the average, average rate, so the average rate of change, of change, of the function. So the average rate of change of f over a b. Is. And this is something that you see in algebra class, except in algebra class, they use different notation. They use x1 and x2, which I don't like. I like this class better because I like a and b. It's easier to write a and b. So the average rate of change of f over a, b. Basically, you subtract the y values, you divide, and you subtract the x values. So it'll be f of, and I like to use b, so f of b minus f of a, and then you divide by b minus a, so b minus a, so b minus a, that's it, that's the formula. So this is called the average rate of change, so that's it. You can put an a here, and an a here, and a b here, and a b here, you can switch the letters. As long as this matches this, and this matches this, uh, you're good. We'll do an example later. So is that the slope? Yes, yeah, slope. If it's a straight line, it would be the slope, yeah. If this was a line, it would be the slope. Yeah, this leads to the derivative. If you take, this is the slope of the secant line, actually. Mm -hmm. So if you take the limit, you'll get the derivative. Yep. Yeah, good, good. In fact, um, let's, let's rewrite it that way, uh, the way that uh, Logan is indicating. So over, over x, x plus delta x, I'm using the delta instead of h. I could have used h, I don't know why I didn't use h. Too late. So over this interval, Right? You can rewrite it. It would be f of x plus delta x minus, well, there's a lot of people here. Wow, what a full class. It's going to add to the temperature. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> making it really hot. <laughs> Over f of x. It, yeah. I always think back in the day when this was created, it didn't have air conditioning. Right? And then you subtract this x plus delta x. Minus x. What cancels here on the bottom? The x's. The x's, yeah. So you end up with f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. So this is very familiar, right? This is the slope of the secant line, right? We saw this before. So the average rate of change is really just the slope of the secant line. That's all it really is. Uh, if you remember what that was, the idea was if you had a graph like this, and you have two dots and you connect them and you draw a line, that's called a secant line. This is the slope of that line. Right? We, what, we, what we're doing is we're taking the limit of this. If you take the limit of this, you get infinitely many secant lines and they approach a line that just touches, that's called the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line is the derivative. So if you, if you let delta x go to zero, let's formalize that, if you let it go to zero, then the derivative of f of x is equal to the limit of that expression. So limit delta x goes to 0. f of x plus delta x. My, I kind of like that delta x. It's more work to write it, but it's kind of fun to do it over delta x. So we get this. So if we take the average rate of change and we let delta x go to 0, we get the derivative. It has a new name now, okay? It has a new name. We're gonna call this thing, or the derivative, we're gonna call both of these, the instantaneous rate of change. 
So f prime of x is now the instantaneous rate of change. So instantaneous, the big word, instantaneous rate of change. Instantaneous rate of change. So the average rate of change is just this over here, right? Or, 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 or this, right? And then the instantaneous is the derivative. So what is it for? Um, it gives you the rate of change at that particular point, right? It gives you the slope at that particular point. As a simple example, just for intuitive purposes, let's say, oh, it's hot in this room, so let's use this example. Let's say f of t is the temperature in this room. <laughs> temp, temp at time t. It's the temperature after, at, at, after t minutes in this room. So you plug in a value for t, there's a formula, and it gives you the temperature, like you know, 80 degrees, 85 degrees, 100 degrees, 120 degrees. So the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change of the temperature. So it will tell you how fast the temperature is changing, right? So if it's heating up, it'll be positive because the temperature is increasing. Uh, if it's cooling down, it's going to be negative because the temperature is decreasing. So we'll talk about that later. So this would be the rate of change of the temperature. So rate of change of temp at time t. So the derivative gives you the rate of change of anything, right, of anything. Um, you have any object, anything, any function, and the derivative will give you the rate of change of that function, right? So if this tells you the population of deer in a forest, the derivative will tell you how fast the population is growing or shrinking. If this is money, it'll tell you how fast your money is increasing or, or decreasing. The derivative tells you whether the quantity is decreasing or, or increasing. So it's the rate of change. In this class, in this section, today in particular, uh, we're going to be focusing on one rate of change in particular, that's velocity. Okay, so let's, let's talk about velocity and acceleration, and then we're done. We're just going to do homework for the rest of the day. We'll do lots of problems. This is stuff you'll see in physics. Um, so it's, it's kind of nice to see it now. In physics, they tend to use more formulas. Here we use less formulas and more math. So I like it better um, because there's less formulas to know. Uh, makes it a bit easier. So velocity, velocity slash acceleration. Acceleration has two C's, I believe. Two C's. I know that because the first time I taught calculus, I misspelled it. And someone yelled at me. There's a woman in the front row. ACC! Oh, acceleration. She was like 80 years old. I remember her face. ACZ, look up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She got it. Oh yeah. Hey, what's up? It's hot in here, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sweating it out. It's a pool party. Okay. So let's <laughs> <that's... laughs> right. sounds fun. But S of T, uh, let's, let, this is gonna be the position at time T. So it's the position of an object at time T. So S is always our position function. This is always given in the problem. They'll always give you, they'll always give you the position function in all the, in all the problems. Okay. And so first there's a formula that's really important for the homework. Um, you probably will not see this on your test. Uh, it's the average velocity. The average velocity over, over AB is So if it was your function f, the average rate of change, you would just use the formula. You would do f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So here it's s, so you just use this. So when the homework asks for the average velocity, you just use this one, okay? So you do s of b minus f, s of a over b minus a. We'll do one later today, we'll do one. Uh, one semester, one time I put it on a test, because I was trying to be nice, I thought, oh, it's easy, and it was a disaster. It didn't go well at all because I never do it in class, right? So it makes sense that people would get it wrong. Um, so we'll do one today just so you see how to do the homework. So that's the average velocity. If you take the limit of that, you're going to get the instantaneous rate of change. So you'll get the velocity, the instantaneous velocity, okay? So let's go ahead and write all that down. So the velocity is... Velocity is the derivative of position, so the velocity will be s prime of t. That's the velocity function. 
So if you have position, the first derivative is velocity, right? The first derivative is, is velocity. So let me just recap here. Position is, S, is S of T. Just I'll write it above so you have it all in one place. I'm going to write all of them in one place so you have them. So position, velocity. Hopefully that makes sense, right? If something gives you your position, um, the rate of change of position is velocity. You can think of, uh, oh, think of I-4 when you're driving, right? The speed limit's always miles per hour, so it's like the change in miles over the change in hours. All right, just thinking of I-4, because I drove there today. It's really dangerous. So change in miles, do you all drive on I-4? No. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it horrible? Yeah, I do 80 and people like honk at me. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> I started listening to like really peaceful music. <laughs> yeah, like, like really chill stuff. <laughs> Changing miles over change, so that's like miles per hour, right? You can, this, is the, this tells you the position, right? This is the change in miles and this is the time, change in hours. So. Okay, so velocity is the change in position over time. What if, what if you change your velocity over time? What would that be? What's the change in velocity? Something you were going to say. Acceleration. Acceleration. That's how fast you're speeding up or slowing down, right? So acceleration, acceleration is, is S double prime of T. Okay, so S double prime of T. So the first derivative is velocity. The second derivative is acceleration. Right? Second derivative is uh, acceleration. Um, and you can think of this as V of T. You want you know v for velocity we can make up names and we can call this a of t in physics they tend to use a lot of formulas i was recently looking at a physics book a few weekends ago for fun um long story and they had all kinds of crazy formulas in the book i was like whoa this is way more complicated than what we do in this class this seems easier to me because you just take derivatives to get the rest of the stuff right so they give you this the first derivative is velocity the second one uh, is acceleration Ooh, this is important Speed is different. See, velocity has a direction. Like, if you're going that way, that might be positive, and then going the other way would be negative. So, velocity has a direction. Speed does not. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. That comes up in Calc 2. I haven't taught Calc 2 in a while, but I remember uh, the first section has, like, this velocity problem. And, like, there's a plane flying this way. They give the speed of the plane, but, like, the velocity is negative. So, yeah think. So speed is the absolute value of velocity. And this one's just for fun. Uh, you're not going to see this one. Uh, the third derivative, this is called jerk, I believe. Jerk. Like, don't be a jerk. Jerk. And I don't know, I, I forgot to Google it. Uh, the fourth it is. It is? Yeah. So what are they called? The fourth, fifth, and sixth? Snap, crackle, pop. Snap, crackle, pop. And yeah. the, the seventh, eighth is like uh, lock and pop and lock. Luck. Yep. Wow. It's a, it's a major nerdy. That's good. Like, yeah. I think of the, you know the people who like make rockets. Those are the people who use this stuff, right? I mean, I'm guessing, right? So you know, like uh, rocket science. And people say well, it's not rocket science. No, it actually is. Like, yeah. Those are the people who, who work, I guess, with this stuff, like jerk and stuff like that. So snap, crackle, pop will be the fourth, fifth, and, and sixth uh, derivative. We won't, we won't even see jerk in this class. It's not even going to come up. So. Don't worry about jerk. Um, there's a formula that will be given to you, but you kind of have to know what it is a little bit. Uh, rather, the form will be given. The position of a free-falling object. So if something is falling, like if you drop a penny from a building, of a free-falling object. Okay, so if you drop like something from a building, uh, neglecting air resistance, so there's no air resistance. Uh, so neglecting, I'll write it down for correctness. Neglecting air resistance, re resistance is, and there's a formula. Um, it's S of t, S of t equals one half g. The g is the acceleration due to gravity. T squared plus uh, S not v not t plus S not. Okay, what's, what did you say? Not? Not? That's V naught. V sub zero is written V naught. Not is spelled N A U G H T. I Googled it. It means zero in English. But what? Like, who says that? 
I had not burgers for breakfast. Like, I have zero burgers. <laughs> How many slices of pizza did you have not? <laughs> Apparently it means zero, but maybe only in physics. So physicists love to say V naught, S naught. Uh, it's V sub zero, S sub zero. When you're lazy, you'll say V zero. You forget to say the sub, because you can only so, say so many words. So basically, you'll read the question, and you have to plug these numbers in. They'll give you this in the problem. Okay. Um, or, or, yeah. What else? What else? Uh, G is the acceleration due to gravity. ACC due to gravity. Anyone know what that is? 9.81 meters per second. Oh, there's, there's a one? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, oh I see. Well, I'll put eight, but I believe 9.8132, I think, is like the first five. Whoa, so hardcore! <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, I guess you knew physics. Um, that's the acceleration due to gravity. So gravity is pulling us down now, right? I guess. That's why we're not floating. Unfortunately, or fortunately, <laughs> uh, or or if you use the other units, it's negative 32 feet per second squared. That's the other. What are those called? These units, English units or something? Empirical. 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 And these are SI, right? SI units, empirical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the our calculus book tends to use a lot of these. Yeah. They use stuff like inch pounds when they talk about force. Physics people hate that stuff. It's fun to like tease physics people about it. And then S sub zero, this is your initial position. This is really important. So initial position. And V sub zero, this would be your uh, in initial velocity. Yes, good, but initial velocity. Initial velocity. All right, good stuff. And, and you don't have to memorize this. It says it in my notes. It says don't have to memorize. Apparently I wrote it there in a red pen. So you don't have to memorize it. You just have to know S0 and V0. Okay. S0 is initial position, V0 is initial velocity. Um, I have a problem in my notes, and I have all the answers, so it's really nice. Maybe we should do this one instead of homework first, because this is like a really good problem. Then after this one, we can just do some homework or fun or whatever. So let's, let's do this one uh, from my notes. It's really good. Uh, I can write it on the board. Nice, 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 nice question. So. We drop from a building. What's a nice thing to drop? A, a, ball. a ball. A ball. A ball. A pumpkin. A pumpkin. A I'll do a pumpkin. A pumpkin. A pumpkin. You can drop a car. A car. A pumpkin. Can I spell it right? Pump, 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 pump. A pumpkin <laughs> is dropped from a building. From a building. I think in my notes it says coin. Uh, I think on the test, the last semester was a banana, like so. A pumpkin is dropped from a building 1,364 feet tall. I know. When I was a little kid, I used to dream of throwing pennies off buildings, but uh, that's, I know it's really dark. <laughs> can, can it kill people? You all know? But just some physics there. Maybe it's just for a good question. Then would it kill people? I don't know. Okay. Okay, yeah. I'm really hurt still, though. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want to like, yeah, you get them singing and like, madman is throwing pennies off the building. Or something. <laughs> so, pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, yeah. It's all over the news, like headline news. <laughs> Apparently the idea was given to them in a calculus class. <laughs> <laughs> An accessory, no, don't, don't throw pennies off the building. So they give you this, they give you this, and they'll give you the formula, which is nice. So plus, what is this thing? Plus V naught T plus S naught. So they give us that. So they give it to you, so you don't have to memorize it. Right? That makes it a little bit better. Hey, anyway, where's the negative 16 come from? I think it's because G is negative 32, right? And so 1 half times negative 32 is negative 16. Ah, cool, right? I know. I had to think about it. Why is it negative 16? Because of this, right? Negative 32 times 1 half is, is negative 16. So this is given. This is given. And so this is a nice little problem. Uh, so part A, we want to find the position function. So the position, position function. So position function. Pretty easy problem. Position function. We'll go through all the parts. So solution. Solution. So let's draw a picture and visualize what's going on. Let's try to think about 
what's happening. So I guess I'll, I like to draw pictures, it's fun. So here's the building, right? And here's the pumpkin. Right, and then that's the pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a face on it. Okay, so, so and it's being dropped from a building. So the building is how big is the building? Thirteen sixty four. Okay, I haven't done this in a year. I well, no, I did this last semester. I don't remember. Well, it wasn't a pumpkin though, so it's harder now. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need to figure out what this stuff is, right? So if it's being dropped, what do you think the initial velocity is? Zero, yeah. So if you throw it, if it's given to you, like I say this marker and I throw it, it will be given. But it's not given, so, so V0 is zero. Because it's being dropped. So whenever something is dropped, it's, it's zero. What would your initial position be in this case? 1364. Yeah, 1364. And I always think in my head of this, and I've never said it, but it kind of bothers me a little bit. Like, what if there's someone dropping the pumpkin? You would have to take into consideration their height too, I guess. We'll pretend it's rolling off the building. <laughs> All right, that's it. So S of T is just negative 16 T squared. Uh, v naught is zero, so that's going to go away. Plus 1364. That's it. That's it. That's the position function. I know, it's pretty easy. It's not bad. Yeah? It's like, what if, when would the V naught change the two? It would give it to you. Okay. If, it, if it said Joey kicks a pumpkin into the air at an initial velocity of 100 feet per second, okay. it would be given to you. Yes, Logan? Do you always want it in a pair of fermentation? Just whatever the problem says. It'll, it'll specify like 9.8 or 32? No, or will it just give you that? It'll just give you that. Okay. Yeah, I usually let the units go on this one because I always forget to put them on the test. Yeah. Wait, so <laughs> <It'll be bad. laughs> yeah. So if there are units on there and we don't put the units on, or I, no, I'm not. Every semester I forget to put the units on the test question. So I probably will this time too. So don't worry about it. I figured you penalize enough in physics for it, right? In physics, some teachers make you put the units in the intermediate steps, right? Like, it's like, oh, you forgot the units on step three. Game over. <laughs> like, yeah, no, not, this is math. We're okay. Velocity. <laughs> Velocity. <clears throat> we'll be doing units later when we, uh, on Monday. And, that, and those problems will be given. So how do you find the velocity? What do you do here? You take the what? The derivative. The derivative. Yeah, that's all you got to do. It's really easy derivative, too. Let's make it look complicated. Let's see. V of t. Oh, it's, it's the derivative, right? So it'll be 2 times 16. So negative 32t. And, oh, 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 I almost messed up. What's the derivative of 1364? Zero. Zero. Did, I, did I make mistakes last time? Yeah. yeah. I did? Okay. Were we doing double points in this class? Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, I don't remember <laughs> making mistakes, but I believe you. I'm sure I wrote it down somewhere. I slept like 10 hours, so I'm not going to mess up today. Any questions? <laughs> yeah, I know. I went to bed before 9 o'clock. And I woke up like at 7.15. I was so tired. I'm like, oh. Yeah really tired. Uh, this one I don't want to do it, so we should do it, because this one's in the homework. We want the average velocity over 3, 4. So find the average velocity over this interval. You will not see this on an exam. I usually don't, don't bother with this. Uh, it's something you see in physics, and I don't know. I just never put it on the test. Which one do you have to use to find the average velocity? The position or the velocity? Position. Yeah, that's the confusing part. Right? Remember the formula had the S in it. That's really tricky. That's what happened that one time I put this on a test. It felt really bad for the class. Because I, I purposely, and I made it a lot of points on purpose. I'm like, oh, that would be nice. It's S of four. <laughs> yeah. Dark times minus S of three <laughs> over four minus three. Good, I'm following my notes. Otherwise, I would forget to do this. And then you just have to be really careful because you have this its constant, right? It's going to cancel, but I'll show all the steps. So plugging in 4, we have negative 16, 4 squared plus 13, 64. That's, that's just the S of 4, right? That's putting in, putting in the t equals 4 here. Putting in the t equals 4. Minus 
And then S of 3, it's two terms. I'm going to put parentheses. Okay, so it'll be negative 16 times 3 squared plus 1364. Okay, and then, and then I, I think I did that right. Like that. There we go. It's a little more clear. And I think there we go. Looks a little bit better. 4 minus 3 is just 1. And then I put this in my calculator. I did this beforehand. Um, I got negative 112 as the final answer. You should you check if you want. Feet per second. So, which makes sense because it's going down. So, so if you put all of this in your calculator, take your track it if you want. Um, it should be, yeah. And it's negative because the object is falling, right? The pumpkin is falling. This comes up in the homework. It's really tedious. It's one of those things. You have a lot of homework in these sections, so try to just like pick away at it slowly. Yeah. Would it be feet per second squared? Uh, no, that's that's uh, acceleration. Yeah, because uh, think of uh, so think of velocity as miles per hour or feet per feet per second, and then if this is velocity, the rate of change of velocity is feet per second per second. So that's feet per second squared. Right. That make sense? Yeah. That, that, that has a name whenever you like you're messing with the units in physics. What is that called? Do you remember? You ever study that? Dimensional, dimensional analysis? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, I remember learning that in physics one. I remember my teacher, dimensional analysis. I'm like, whoa, that sounds really hard. That's what we did in like, chemistry. Well. Oh, you do it in chemistry? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I've never, I've actually never studied chemistry ever. Like none. Not even in high school. No, You're zero. You should give it a try. Yeah. H2O is water. Yeah, I don't know. I've never, I have a friend who had his PhD in chemistry. He wasn't a nice guy. Uh, so that's, that's, I was going to say something about him. But he, just, he was really like into himself. He was just a mean person. So. Um, he was like, chemistry is easy. No wonder. Yeah, he wanted to do math. But he was from France. Did you do and in France, he had to take some tests. Yeah. And he, he didn't do good enough to do math. So he did chemistry. But yeah. he secretly wanted to do math his whole life. And he was like angry about it. During the acid the instantane, inst instantaneous, instantaneous velocity at t equals three seconds. I'm just trying to do a bunch of different questions, so you're able, so we're able to do the homework. I erased the velocity function. I don't know why I did that. I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll put it up here. So we had, we had our position. This was our position. And our velocity was, those are our functions, right? Is that them? Yes. Is instantaneous velocity in the No, probably not. Yeah. So what is instantaneous velocity? It's just, it's just the derivative of velocity, it's just the derivative of position, right? It's just, so we just use, super easy. So we just use this, right? We use the velocity function, right? Just use the velocity function. So you just, is that, is that right, by the way? Shouldn't be prime. Huh? Prime? No, it's V. I called it V, not S prime. You can call it S prime. Did I call it S prime before? No, you called it Okay. So then, so just V of three. So you just plug in three. So it'd be negative 32 times three. So it'd be uh, negative 96 feet. Second, checking myself. All right, so t equals three. So this is really easy. Um, so you just so instantaneous is just the velocity. Average velocity is the only one where you have to use that position. All right, part e. Let's keep going. What's what's the time required? Time required for pumpkin. So for the pumpkin to hit the ground. Time required for the pumpkin to actually hit the ground. Wow, it's getting hotter in here. Isn't it? Yeah, it's really hot. Wow. Time, I'll shut that off and blow up. That's what I'm done with this problem so it doesn't like blow up. <laughs> so I have to buy another one. Time required for the pumpkin to hit the ground. So 
What's going to happen when the pumpkin hits the ground? What's the position? Zero. Zero. So this will be on the test. So, so this is so so you have to set the position function equal to zero, right? So so to find out how long it takes to hit the ground, you set this equal to zero. So we have negative sixteen t squared plus thirteen sixty four equals zero. Yeah. And then so you just you just subtract thirteen sixty four now. Right? And so we get, this is where calculators are really awesome. And then just divide by negative 16. So divide by negative 16. Uh, yuck. So take the square root of that number. Um, you get plus or minus, but you only take the plus because it's time. So I got 9.233 seconds someone should check that someone should check it's right it's right okay cool cool any questions so far we're building up to the harder question so we're just slowly slowly building up okay the last well next question f a b c d e f f find the velocity Velocity of the pumpkin of the pumpkin at impact at impact. So, what is the velocity when the pumpkin hits the ground? It's called the impact velocity. So, you know, it can also say find the velocity at which the pumpkin strikes the ground. Like sounds really intense. Like strikes. Like I just have this visual image of a pumpkin. Why did you think of pumpkin? It's not even uh, on the wing. Whoever said pumpkin was it? Oh, it was you, Austin. Oh, just. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. this curves. Because of what? Our last math teacher, uh, we did something and we had like throw pumpkins. Oh. Yeah, we were like doing math like for hours, like to figure out like how high the pumpkin went based on how far it went. Oh, what a fun class. <laughs> <laughs> so I like, like, want to be there. That sounds really <laughs> so, so, that sounds really cool. So to find the velocity of impact, we just take the time and plug it in to which function? The position function or the velocity function? Velocity function, right? Because we want the velocity at impact. So all you do is take this number and plug it in there. So, so it'd be v of 9.233. That's going to be negative 32 times 9.233. So I don't know what this is. Uh, I forgot my calculator, and I did it different in my notes. Negative 295. Okay. Point four. Six. Point four six. Okay. Yeah, that matches what I have actually. Good. Eight percent. So on your exam, it's going to be a little bit harder. You say, wow, how? Um, maybe I'll just ask you this, right? So if I only ask you part F, you'll see the. Well, I'll show you the old exam in a minute. It has it has this question. If you only have to do part F, you have to do everything else on your own first. So to find, yeah, it makes it better. It means you have to think, right? Oh, I know. I love it. So. That means you have to think, okay, I have to find out what's the velocity when it hits the ground. So step one, I set the position equal to zero. Then I plug that number into the velocity function, right? So, so that's how, so it's a little bit harder. We'll do it in a minute. We'll do it all over again. Yeah, we'll do it again. Uh, uh, what's that? So what if you screw up something and you screw up the whole thing? Yeah, but it's not that many points. It's just, it's just a few points. Um, let's maybe now, I'm going to turn this off. And I'll pull down the homework. So I'm going to turn it off so it doesn't blow up. And uh, I'll pull down the homework. And we'll just do homework. We're just going to go through the homework. And that way you can see it. Right? And then, then we can we just figure out what, what we want to do together. Bye.